OK, let's go back to the U.S. Secretary of State's visit to Africa, Rex Tillerson, on a five-nation visit. I can speak now to John Stremlau. He's an international relations professor at Wits University. John, good to have you with us. Uh, now, I know that you're pretty sceptical of the benefits of Tillerson's African tour, but does it suggest that the U.S. wants to engage more with Africa? I'm not sure what this means for Donald Trump and Rex Tillerson. The U.S. has been deeply engaged in Africa, as you know, uh, and certainly since the Cold War ended, it's been very positive from an African perspective. Now, what he is doing out here seems to be focused mostly on counterterrorism. There's a big agenda for Africa that goes beyond counterterrorism, but he's limiting his trip to the northern arc of crisis, and he seems, even though he's given a pledge of more money for humanitarian assistance to be focused on those issues only, not on democracy and trade and economic development that you mentioned in your opening before we were interrupted. Uh, how is President Trump perceived by African leaders and how might they respond to Rex Tillerson's visit? Well, you know, they responded in a very muted and I thought mature way and a, and a distinguished way to the uh, terrible t comment he made two months ago that supposedly was the prompting for this overdue. But the Africans are pretty clear-eyed and know a lot about American history and race relations. Trump ran against the first African-American president on the birther movement and impugning Obama's uh, uh, you know, citizenship and character. Uh, and, and Obama was a magnificent president compared to Donald Trump. Obama never lied, never had any scandals. And Trump is seen here as, as, as a disaster, frankly. You mentioned uh, the, 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 uh, the motive of this visit uh, as being primarily about security earlier on. What about trade, though? Because there is a lot of uh, concern that China is taking a more active involvement uh, in Africa, is invol investing a lot in African countries. Is the U.S. concerned that Africa as a continent might be turning away from the U.S. and more towards China? I don't, well, there may be a concern, but it's certainly a legitimate uh, uh, reality and option for China to support African development, and the Africans are grateful for that. I think that when the uh, Chinese and the Americans cooperate in security areas, as they have done or were doing uh, before Trump came along, and they divide their labors in ways that support Africans in response to African re requests, Everybody win-win-wins on that formula. You know, Africa is not a strategic concern to either China or Africa or, or the United States, but it is a very important continent in world affairs. And the, if, the, if the major powers can cooperate there, uh, and, and I could include everyone, including Turkey and, of course, the European Union, that's fine for Africa. And I think that would be a very positive. But the comment that Tillerson made in terms of competing with China is a bit far-fetched, given how active China is and really playing a very shrewd hand out here. Just briefly, what do you make about the, the, the countries that Tillerson has, has chosen or, or that the administration has chosen for him to visit? Chad, Djibouti, Ethiopia, Kenya, Nigeria. Um, are, are they significant? Are, are there countries perhaps he, he should have gone to that it's interesting that he's not going to? Well, of course, he should have been coming down here to South Africa, which is a, has been a major partner of the United States and has a lot of very strong supporters in America. But... Uh, he's not gone to Ghana. He's not gone to a lot of the democratizing and, and more advanced African countries to which America can have a robust partnership. He's going to countries in crisis. All of those countries are under enormous stress right now. And frankly, I don't think the Americans, or certainly not the State Department, the Pentagon is playing a role there. But uh, it's a very limited a band of countries that are not representative of the 54 or 55 countries that are, are free and independent in this continent. Uh, really interesting speaking with you, John. Thank you very much indeed for that, John Stremlau there.